Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to tonight's Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee on the 22nd of February 2023. Uh, firstly, apologies. I've got apologies from Councillor Jay, and I think everybody else is present. Uh, agenda item number two, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, I'd just like a proposer and a seconder. Uh, I can't, as I wasn't here. So, uh, proposer, Councillor Jones. Second, Councillor Smith, uh, and just uh, hands in agreement, please. Uh, agenda item number three, uh, declarations of interest. Has anybody got any declarations of interest? <coughs> nope. Uh, update from the chair. Um, th there was a question sent through to me via email, which uh, by Councillor uh, which was able to go away and quickly do a little bit of digging, uh, which revolved around the breast screening program. Um, just had a couple of comments back from the uh, one of the officers' managers, uh, the offices managers, and she stated um, that it's a mobile unit which tours around several locations and is generally static at each location for four to six months. It's a three-year rolling program. Whilst at the location. Uh, and just before they get to the location, they send out invitations to every eligible person, which is approximately three weeks before they get there. Uh, three weeks before the appointment, sorry. Uh, however, if people turn of age whilst the van isn't in Tamworth, they can self-refer to any mobile sites, Burton Hospital or Derby Hospital. Uh, furthermore, if any person develops symptoms or discovers anything of concern, then they can see their GP, who should then make a two-week wait referral, also known as an urgent referral, which can be conducted at either Burton or Derby. Um, I did send across um, a few different um, links, uh, which I can pass on to yep, yourself, and, and that can be sent across uh, to the rest of the councillors. Uh, agenda item number five, uh, responses to reports of the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee, uh, there are none. Agenda item number six, uh, consideration of matters referred to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee from Cabinet or for Council, there are no new items. Agenda item number seven, update on health related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. Uh, so there was a, a Council meeting held on the 30th of January uh, 23. Uh, and a written update has been circulated and the meeting focused uh, on one, the integrated care partnership strategy, two, the inpatient mental health service previously provided by the George Bryan Centre. I'd just like to know, um, I've had clarification from the chair of that committee and that meeting and that item was specific around um, for that committee to discuss the further consultation process, not not the actual inpatient facility itself. Um, but there are, uh, as mentioned, the consultation is going on. Uh, I've put it across social me media, and I think if I can pass some onto yourself, and it can be cir circulated across the committee. Uh, and I'd appreciate it if we can get as much of that onto social media and in and around Tamworth, that'd be brilliant. Uh, Another item at that meeting was developing healthier communities and county have requested that all district boroughs consider this report recommendations in the context of their own organisation. Uh, there was links in, in the agenda item, uh, our agenda item, about counties one, uh, and I'd like to discuss that a little bit further on later on in the meeting. Uh, so it's just to highlight that. Um, there was another county meeting held on the 13th of February, no written update yet as available. Uh, the video of the meeting can be watched via the staff's county website. Uh, again, there was a couple of items discussed there. So there was the mental health and mental wellbeing strategy 2023 and 20 to 2028. Uh, the update on mental health support teams in schools and the children's mental health update. Uh, are there any questions on part of that meet, uh, our meeting in that context. Nope. Uh, agenda item number eight is the housing strategy update. Uh, following the review of the strategy which was received by the committee in July 2022, the 
Committee requested regular reporting on actions and relevant dia as they relate to the health and well-being of Tamworth communities. And this is the initial report. The Assistant Director Partnerships, Joe Sands, has provided the written report and is attending to provide an overview and respond to any questions. And I'd just uh, like to pass over to Joe, please. Thank you, Chair. I do apologise. I've got a bit of a cold. So if I start losing my voice halfway through, <coughs> or have a coughing fit, I do apologise. Um, yeah, as, as um, the Chair said, um, councillors, um, I did a, an overview of the housing strategy in July um, so that members could see what was actually in the action plan. And this report is outlining the, the different data sets that we hold. Um, as far as I've been able to identify with colleagues and, and certainly some of the, the information that my team deal with every day. Um, and, I've, and, and, and I will go through this and I obviously would like the committee to consider the information and provide any feedback um, for future reporting in relation to the housing strategy. The first priority, um, enabling the provision of sufficient new homes to meet the needs of the existing population. Uh, and those attracted to the area. Um, there were some questions at the initial <coughs> meeting in July around <coughs> um, affordable homes, um, and this has been kindly provided by our planning teams. Um, the overall affordable housing requirement on new sites is 20% of the housing. The first homes initiative came in in 2021, so 25% of that affordable provision needs to be a first homes initiative. Additional affordable homes is then 10% and the remaining can be provided as rent. So the information is held within our websites um, on the link provided in the report. And at this time, 2021-22, um, affordable homes permitted has been 29 and affordable homes completed has been 90. And that is obviously a, a, an overhang from previous years. So the first homes cr criteria, the nomination to 25%, um, eligible buyers receive a 30% reduction on full market value. The percentage discount is passed on to future purchases in perpetuity on house market value, and that is recorded by the council. And a maximum price of a first home on its initial sale after discount has been applied will be 250,000. The first home's discount is secured through a planning obligation, which runs with the land. A title restriction is also placed on every first home, which prevents the transfer of title without the express permission of the council. So they do remain as first homes in perpetuity. Priority two, um, making the best use of existing housing and related assets. Um, the 2021 Staffordshire Joint Strategic Needs Assessment sets out the current and future strategic health and care needs in Staffordshire and it's one of the key highlights on there in there was that fuel poverty increased to 15 percent and it's higher than is national within Staffordshire and the warmer homes is supported 250 plus homes by June 2021. Uh, highlighted there is a number of ways that Tamworth Borough Council directly um, assist residents who may be experiencing fuel poverty Beat the Cold, commissioned as Home Energy Advice Tamworth Heat, our Staffordshire-based charity. They're commissioned by the council in partnership with the county council. Um, their aim is to reduce fuel poverty and cold-related ill health, and they can help with energy advice to reduce bills, income maximisation, ensuring residents are claiming everything they possibly can, assisting eligible clients to uh, access schemes to improve the en energy efficiency of their homes, help with emergency payments such as fuel vouchers and food bank vouchers and register eligible clients for the priority services register with their supplier. They can also support with water bills. And obviously that the mantra to that is an energy efficient home is a warmer home, which is also cheaper to heat and will involve and improve health and wellbeing. The commission service through the private sector housing budget currently is a contract value of eight and a half thousand pounds per year. Um, the performance statistics were included as an appendices. I will report that actually this year, Beat the Cold have had to increase their advisors from six to nine. Um, and actually the eight and a half thousand pounds represents 
around a quarter of the price of one of those advisors. So they are actually becoming oversubscribed um, in Tamworth. So we are actually looking at this, this point in time, how we can increase support to beat the cold as the cost of living crisis continues. Staffordshire Warm Homes is a scheme run by the Staffordshire County Council for which we contribute through, through heat. Um, and the goal is to combat fuel poverty there. There are several initiatives that came through Staffordshire Warmer Homes, the local authority delivery funding um, to actually give some energy advice and support and installations for people on low income and actually with eligible support. Um, applications are running directly to E.ON through our Staffordshire Warm Homes partners and currently in Tamworth um, these, this funding runs out in March. There have been 63 um, requests for Tamworth and at this point 36 installations. The Home Upgrade Grants, HUG funding, which took me a while to get my head around, um, is a government scheme awarding grants to local authorities for energy efficiency and clean heating upgrade in owner-occupied and private rented sector fuel poor homes off the grass grid. The funding is administered through the Staffordshire Warm Homes. Um, at this point in time, there have been no leads recorded from Tamworth, um, and actually the HUG funding will be awarded from early 2023, with delivery running from April 2023 until March 25. So we'll get some updates um, moving forward for Tamworth for people who are actually eligible for that funding. Tackling empty homes is a corporate priority, and there's strategies and developments. Houses of multiple occupation, Gosh, Houses of Multiple Occupation, HMO Licensing. The committee were interested and asked me some questions around that last time. We currently um, license 127 HMOs. Uh, sorry, we don't, we don't license 127. There are 127 HMOs identified in Tamworth. At this time, we have 66 currently active licenses. 61 HMOs do not require licensing but must comply with legislation and a proactive inspection regime is now in place and is, and is likely to identify more HMOs. The number of HMOs is not high for the size of the borough and provides an affordable housing option. I have included on here as well damp and mould following the tragic death of Awab Ishak. A report has been submitted to the Homelessness Prevention and Social Housing Committee on the 16th of February outlining the Council's review for our Council's stock. The Secretary for Levelling Up Houses and Communities also contacted local authorities to provide details of approaches to damp and mould in private sector. An outline plan has been submitted and key performance indicators have been updated, which I've included here. So we now have updated KPIs as follows. We record the number of disrepair requests. Um, there has been 11 between September and December. Zero have actually been disrepair that, that include damp and mould for private sector accommodation. Our HMO inspections uh, per month have been three. Number of proactive inspections per month has been eight between September and December. Uh, number of Category 1 hazards, which is a, a, the highest hazard that would need addressing with landlords as a result of inspection, has been zero. And the number of formal interventions around notice and harassment issues for landlords' behaviour has been zero this quarter. And there is also a number of additional KPIs that we've added in there around enforcement. The approach is actually included in our sec private sector housing enforcement policy. Priority three, ensuring housing plays a key role in delivering Tamworth's response to climate change. Um, a net zero carbon baseline report was presented by the leader of the council to the <coughs> ISAG committee on the 26th of December 2022 and endorsed by cabinet on the 20th of October 2022. And the recommendations on that report were to endorse the baseline assessment, prepare an action plan and produce an action plan by the 31st of December 2024. So identifying assistance for homeowners and private tenants to live in affordable and efficient homes is a priority for the Staffordshire Warm Homes Partnership. I've included there on our approach to how's it to sorry to climate change an outline of Eco4 
Eco4 is an obligation placed on the largest energy suppliers um, and is focused on the least energy efficient homes occupied by low income and vulnerable households. Households may be eligible through receiving means tested benefits, living in the least energy efficient social housing or through Eco Floor flexible agreement eligibility. This Eco Floor flexible is aimed at helping households who are not likely to be in receipt of means tested benefits, but they must live in either an owner occupied or privately rented home. So it allows for those members of the public living in um, low um, energy efficient houses to actually access some funding. There are four flexible routes to that, income based less than 31,000 or, or eligible criteria as outlined in the report and the NHS referrals, NHS doctors can also refer people into that funding with certain health conditions. We are working at the moment on the process for that with Beat the Cold and we are going to be signing up to the Eco4 Flex and issuing a statement of intent in February 2023. Data can be provided and will, re will be provided as part of future reports should the committee wish. I would also highlight here we've been doing a project with private landlords who are not compliant with energy efficiency regulations 2015 um, to ensure that private rented properties have an energy performance certificate of E or above. That is an ongoing project. Priority four, ensure everyone who lives or works in Tamworth has access to the appropriate housing that promotes well-being. I've included there for the committee um, information around our Citizens Advice Mid Mercia who operate in Tamworth as Tamworth Advice Centre. <coughs> they offer an inclusive financial wellbeing, debt and general advice service, a tenancy sustainment project, a homelessness prevention project and a Sacred Heart project which is outreach support funded through our homelessness. Um, the contract is paid for across the council and the contract is worth £96,000 at this point in time. Tamworth Advice Centre quarterly reports are actually attached as appendix 2A to 2D. <coughs> Excuse me. Some of the key headlines, September to December, the, the Tamworth Advice Centre report um, cl cl client issues remain complex and can take multiple appointments. There is an increasing amount in debt coming through the self-referral route. There's been very large increase in credit card debt, which has increased by 90,000. And as a result of that, we've managed to get some information around debt within the council tax um, bills that are going out to 33,000 households shortly to actually refer people into assistance if they have debt issues. There's also been reported large increase in overdrafts and higher purchases an increase in council tax arrears, but also an increase in the number of debts suggesting that amounts owed individually are lower. Rent arrears have increased. Fuel arrears seem to be less, which may mean that support given out locally and by central government is assisting. Slight increase in mortgage arrears, um, but there has been an increase in face-to-face -face appointments at CTC offices and Heart of Tamworth. Continued communication with clients via text messages, email or WhatsApp, and also facilitating Zoom. And there is also a system called ReferNet, which will allow multiple agencies to refer into the advice centre. There is also an ongoing recruitment programme for volunteers. The Homeless and Rough Sleeping Strategy 2020-2025. We do have a current strategy, and the outcomes are reported to scrutiny. And I believe a breakdown of the homelessness data prevention figures were provided to the committee in January. This report also included proposals for a homelessness hub and the housing revenue account business plan. There is a planned investment in decent homes plus standards to include EPC of, a, of C plus by 2028. <clears throat> Finally, priority five. And I, I do apologise, it's such a lot in here, so um, I'll take questions as we, once we've finished. Um, ensuring appropriate advice and funding is available to support older people to live independently. There's a, a little 
um, information that came from the joint strategic needs assessment there around the demand for adult social care falls and elderly population rising by 42 percent in the next 10 years excuse me <coughs> Healthy ageing promotes um, is part of the um, Staffordshire wellbeing, and it promotes wellbeing and enabling independence for older people. Outcomes of this priority include warm, energy efficient homes for everybody, a strong focus on independence, the prevention of falls amongst older people, more choice at the end of people's lives with a focus on supporting people to remain at home and die at home. The Healthy Ageing Partnership is currently developing a plan and there are several stakeholder workshops which I've included for members there as Appendix 3, should you wish to attend any of those. Um, for, in Tamworth, we support the Disabled Facilities Grant, which I understand uh, members have had a report on in January. In there, we've I've actually included where we are with Tamworth Borough Council at this point, which the Assistant Director Assets kindly provided. The Disabled Facilities Grants are adaptations for Tamworth Borough Council tenants only. The CTCIC, Community Together CIC, have been provided some funding for a hospital to home project. Um, to date, 195 referrals have, been readmitted to, have not been readmitted to hospital and remain in their own homes. Members are obviously aware of our sheltered housing. Um, for people aged 55 and over, a total of 11 schemes across the borough, and I've included within the report the key performances <clears throat> that, 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 is re that are reported on every quarter. And I'm proud to say that my team supported and can continue to support dementia-friendly community status, <clears throat> which we achieved again this year, working with, um, with, with partners across Tamworth and continues to be a strong voice and advocate for people living with dementia and their carers. We've established an, extreme, an extremely well attended memory cafe and obviously our voluntary sector continue to offer various amounts of projects. What I will say also, we, we are working with the public health around the supportive communities um, information um, and that will continue for people ageing and that's concludes my report and happy to answer any questions where I can. Thank you. Uh, anybody want to start off with questions? <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Uh, did I hear you correctly when you said that houses or homes with less than £31,000 income are eligible for help? They can. This is for the EcoFlex. We have to issue what they call a statement of intent as how we will actually um, move forward with the EcoFlex. And this is for energy efficiency measures, the EcoFlex. And yes, the criteria on that, they do not have to be um, receiving any well, you know, benefits of any description. Um, if their house um, has you know, energy efficiency issues, um, the, then they can apply through that route um, to, yeah, so it's £31,000 household income. It's not benefits means tested. It's 30, that's, They have to prove that's their income. They need to submit the form through Beat the Cold. So Beat the whole Cold will help them. And then that is taken in through to the count to uh, our staff who actually do the checks on their income. And then actually then pass the application forms back to Beat the, beat the Cold to actually apply for energy efficiency measures. Yeah. Thank you. Um, do you know if that's uh, sort of nationwide or is it just Tamworth? It's nationwide. Nationwide. Okay, yeah. Thank you. It's a government initiative. Anybody else? Councillor Kingston. Yep, I'm on. Um, thanks. It's it's brilliant, and I spent quite a couple of hours yesterday morning going through this report. I've got a couple of questions. Do you want me to just to uh, ask each one in turn? Yeah, Would that be, be great, easier? Thank you. Um, with the house of multiple <coughs> occupancies, are we including things like the Holiday Inn in that? Because at the moment, yes, yeah, right. <coughs> at the moment, we've got so many residents living in the Holiday Inn. Um, is that treated as a house of multiple occupancy? The, no, the short answer to that is no. 
<laughs> that's a government initiative through the Home Office for for um, obviously temporary accommodation for asylum seekers. Thank you. Um, on page 22, French priority four, um, you're talking about the Citizens Advice Mid Mercia uh, Tamworth Advice Centre. Um, where actually are those face to face appointments meeting? Um, is it in the oh. old co op butchers opposite the town, opposite the council offices, or is it somewhere else? The um, obviously um, with us moving out of Marmion and House, um, they have managed to do an agreement with Community Together CIC. So most of the face-to-face -face appointments are taken into that building now, which is the hub for CTCIC. And obviously they will accept and meet people at Sacred Heart as well, at the heart of Tamworth. Brilliant. Um, presumably that's well publicised that they can just turn up there and uh, have their chat. They, they use that through their own channels, yes they do, and obviously there is publication, there is um, some information at Heart of Tamworth for that. Yeah. yeah, and with the appendices, um, Appendix 2, looking at the Tamworth Debt and Generalist Advice Project, um, just looking at page 45, I mean, you, you highlighted it in the report. The increase has been huge. If you look at the bottom there, you can see that for, um, you know, we've jumped the previous quarter total of support given was 208,000 or, or, or debt highlighted rather was 208,120 pounds. And that's now increased to 435,000 pounds. So it is highlighting that we do have issues which are probably replicated all across the country and not unique to Tamworth. Um, is the trend based on the data available expected to increase? And if it's going to increase, is it going to be sort of doubling every month do we expect in the short term? And on the back of that, what about the people that we don't know that aren't coming for help and support? How are we trying to target? You mentioned that something with regards to the council tax bills is going out to people, but are we trying anything else or is there any other avenues we could do to try and hit these people? And the final part of that is how are the agencies coping? How are the uh, Tamworth Debt and Generalist Advice support people, how are they coping? Are they going to have to, you touched on that with heat, that they're needing more people. Are we going to have to look at supporting more to get more people on board? I think I'll take as, as much as I can obviously get the information through from our, our contract uh, providers. They, the, I must, they have quantified the increase in debt for credit cards as being up to a point at the end of December, probably before people had got their bills to pay back what they'd borrowed up till Christmas. And they had some, have had some significant debt rises around a few identified individuals, which will hopefully bring that back down once they've got the helping plan. They've not reported that it's likely to get worse, um, obviously, as we move into spring. Um, uh, but they do report every month um, uh, sorry, every quarter, and you'll see it's been fairly steady. Um, so they think that's probably a winter pressure up to Christmas, but they will, obviously, once we get the last report, which is to the end of March, we will see how that's come down. They've not re required or asked for any support at the moment for any increased staff, although they are reporting, as a lot of the voluntary sector are, um, issues around volunteering and getting people to volunteer so they are trying to keep the volunteers and retain the volunteers yes you we are looking at the council tax for the debts around there we do support the voluntary sector to keep you know those information via our own social media channels um, you know if there, there are any specific requests from members then we, we can, we'll happily look at where you think there may need to be more additional support we know the areas of higher need. Heart of Tamworth obviously is within that area um, and also CTCIC's befriending line which started as a befriending line um, during Covid 
it's continually you know a steady flow of people through to that line and will report their line has just gone as a free line they've changed it from a 1827 number to a free line for anybody else who wants to try and contact them um and you know we will look at we'll look at different means of that as part of this i don't know whether the committee are aware we've commissioned the ctcic to do a, a well-being strategy for tamworth and also to do a voluntary sector strategy which is being paid for through the uk shared prosperity fund so yes as moving forward we will actually try and work out if there's any other areas that we've missed that includes events face to face we've had several events face to face as well during the last year um, to to get people in such as the assembly rooms or to heart of tamworth so that will be continuing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for running us through that. Uh, just a couple of um, probably quite quick fire questions. Um, so on the graphs, uh, example for page 31 and 32, you've got um, blank on there. Um, how is that materialised? Is it just a case of it's not been answered? And... Um, Sorry, I'm trying to work out which one this is. I've got... Appendix one. Oh, I, I would need to ask that one. <laughs> I would okay. need to go back to to ask if, it, if they've either missed a formula somewhere in one of the. Excels. Well, I was just thinking maybe yeah. it's just that it wasn't provided. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's that one. Um. And then back on the um, credit card debt. Yeah. How exactly is that actually obtained? Is it from like the holder or some sort of financial institution? Yeah. The 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 the, the um. The advisors that you use are qualified to give debt advice. Um, and obviously they get information through from the, the, the client themselves. Uh, but yes, they are qualified to do that. Anybody else? Thank you. Uh, when you talk about this debt, it's only what people have informed you i mean there might be an awful lot of hidden debt where debt is one of those things that people are ashamed of and maybe won't come forward so it might only be the tip of the iceberg to say it's four hundred thousand or whatever it's going to be so um there's no way of dealing with that is there really no um there are you know there are a lot of national charities that will do free advice like step change um and i do uh, the, the service themselves will actually advise people and put them into specific schemes if that's the case. So yes, you're right, we don't know what we don't know, but yes. Councillor Cook. Uh, yeah, um, with regards, it's not actually exactly under the bit, but um, uh, Debt and that, but if we have any uh, residents which are um, uh, struggling to the extent of they've either got to kind of choose either to pay that, that, or that, etc. I mean, it, uh, that's always a Terrible uh, situation, which we we um, don't ever want to be in, etc. However, it it uh, happens now anyway. Um, I did literally notice that you've got um, cost of living uh, payments, etc., under page uh, forty in that. Um, if any resident is in that uh, situation, um, how are they referred over to get that, if it will uh, help them, etc.? If they report, if they're a housing tenant, um, or if they come in through Revs and Bens, 
the that is the um, information. The, the con part of the contract is that our teams will actually refer them into the advice centre. Um, that is called through a system called ReferNet. So our staff can literally log on to that system, send the person over, the client over to Tamworth Advice Centre. That is then in perpetuity. That 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 record stays with that client. So what happens is if they, they're in the debt, they will go into there. That will be picked up by the advice centre. But it also means as well some of our other voluntary sector partners have actually signed up to that system with Fernet. So that if that advisor thinks there's anything else that they might need a food parcel, uh, for, for instance, or just a social activity, they can actually pass part of that referral through to CTCIC. So that you, you've kind of got a little bit of a wrap round service and they can actually see what's happened to that client. Um, we're hoping that we're moving forward, we can bring other um, voluntary organisations onto it so we can actually start to identify trends. Um, so they are picked up across a variety. That is exactly why the, 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 the revs and men's team pay towards the contract for Tamworth Advice Centre. So do our homelessness teams, our housing teams, so that the clients they deal with at the front line can be directly referred in. And then we've also got the general walk, people walking in or phoning from the street if they've got their own debt issues. Um, so that they're all sort of talking, the systems kind of start talking to one another. So hopefully it will get picked up. That's excellent. Um, um, I mean, as um, councillors, um, if we have any uh, um, residents in that uh, situation, etc., I I understand there is a um uh, fair uh quite a few actually um uh running all these services etc um can can all of us have an email or a contact which we can contact if we have any um, any residents in that uh, situation where we can um, refer them to the person or that um, contact as well. Thank you. I mean, certainly, the, you know, the information is on, actually is, I believe, on the banner to our website and also there is a cost of living page. But there's, I think if we, we can link that into Members Own Joe, can't we? Um, and I'll certainly get the team to do a similar um, thing they've done on the, uh, to the next report. Um, if that wants to be emailed round to, to all councillors, we can do that. Yeah. Councillor Clannell. You'll have to excuse me, I don't know if you'll hear me because my voice has gone completely almost. Um, it's more of a comment really. Um, reading through the report and from what I know previously, we do rely very heavily on the voluntary sector and I just think we need to show you know, the committee that um, the gratitude that that we show for all these voluntary organisations who have stepped up and having to deal with initially COVID and now the cost of living crisis. Um, and I think it's important that the voluntary sector know that we do appreciate what's, what they're, they're doing. So, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm more than happy and I know from, you know, dealings with the, 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 the fantastic partners that we do deal with, that 
we do you know actually bring them to the fore and as i said we are looking at that voluntary sector strategy about how we actually manage and look after the voluntary sector uh working with support staffordshire you know trying to retain volunteers um that will come out over the next year or so with the uk shared prosperity funding so yes uh, thank you and I'm, I'm happy to take that back to all of our key organizations without a doubt uh I've got a, a few questions which might bring uh, some of the questions out uh, from the committee. Um, on the HUG2, why are we so far behind? <coughs> I did ask that question at the meeting that we went to. Um, there are, There is a contractor that to actually is advertising HUG. I think it's so new, it's actually around trying to actually establish and get some... Uh, encouragement so over the next quarter they are aware that there are, there are zero leads at the moment for Tamworth so they are picking that up within that contract uh, <clears throat> it's only because I'm just a bit concerned of it being so new that there's been 46 installs in Stafford and we haven't got one lead I'm happy to pick that up with the county. That, that obviously that is a county initiative through the the warm homes fund, so I can actually uh, pick that up with them. Um, when you speak about ninety thousand pounds that that we um, tender out to the advice centre, does that include all of these appendixes? So that's that oh, ninety thousand pounds are spent all on that work. It it does. Um, the the. Uh, the additional, the only additional one to that is the Sacred Heart, which came through the homelessness. So there is a, a small increase in that, and yeah, but the rest of it is the certainly the three main advices. Yeah, because I mean, for me, uh, taxpayers' money. Um, looking at the at the amount that's been saved, I understand the debt's gone up, uh, and that, that's that is quite worrying. But but the the amount that people are being is going back into their pockets, uh, looking through the data is is, is really encouraging, uh, and I think it's a, a really well thought while uh, while service. Uh, so that, that was just a statement on that one. Um, looking at the damp and mould, um, you've highlighted the KPIs for the private sector. I was just wondering if there's any data for our social housing. That that's will be subject to a separate report to the social housing committee. I mean, obviously, you know, the recommendations in here are for members to advise, because this is specifically around the health and wellbeing as it relates to the housing strategy. So if members have anything that you want to pick up, we can take that forward with colleagues around what you want to see in quarterly or six monthly reports about the housing strategy or whether you take this out of the housing strategy and it becomes a health and well-being, then obviously, you know, that, that's what I kind of need that direction from in that report. Uh, another one. Um, on the private rented sector minimum energy efficiency standards, is that <coughs> meant to be going up to rating C? sometime soon so, so everyone has to be a c and above not an e and above i would just need to defer back to the private sector officer on that i've got a feeling it's d but i will refer back to 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 mel on that one yeah sorry the, the, yeah it's the, d it's d yes yeah it's d In regards to the homelessness and rough sleeping strategy 2020 to 2025, uh, it says that the housing revenue account business plans, plans of investment in decent homes plus standard. It, is that for the works to be completed by 2028 or to start? I would need to go back to Satila on that one to report. She, that's, that's what she's indicated to me at the moment. So yeah, that would need to go back for further investigation. Uh, just last one. Um, you spoke about the is it the Healthy Aging Partnership? Is anybody from Tamworth going to that uh, officer wise or 
to be done. I don't have anybody available to go to those seminars at the moment, but I have made contact with the uh, public health around the um, supportive communities and the healthy ageing. We've actually asked for any further information to come back to us so that we can send relevant officers once they've got the stakeholder engagement. Jay, thank you. Um, uh, just a further comment. I mean, it's really good um, to see where our other policies fit into this strategy. Um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely given me a lot more insight into it, and uh, really thank you for the, the work that you've put in. Um, does anybody else have any... Yeah, you mentioned about um, damp and mould at the last meeting. I requested to, to go on to the work plan for something to be looked at in the next municipal year, the condition of council housing stock from a health, we, health and wellbeing perspective, and that was particularly targeted at the damp and mould issue. So perhaps that could be pulled in in the way that we've got these brilliant KPIs for the private housing sector. We could have a similar data set for the... Um, council uh, housing stock should, should I take that as a recommendation for it to be so uh, recommend the office puts in data set can be yeah. so, so 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 damp mould of social housing in and the private sector. If you want me just to clarify, yeah, in the, exactly the same way that you've got the uh, private sector KPIs and, and data set and everything there, if we could have that just for the council house stock. That then can come off the work plan um, as because that ticks that box. Can I just say, I mean, I know uh, Councillor Kingston that they, uh, Paul is taking up that, that or has, it's the 16th, it was last week, went to the Social Housing uh, Committee uh, around the approach to damp and mould. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I'm not aware of what KPIs will come out of that, so... Councillor Woodrup. Yeah, just going back to the um, the cost of living and the debt, the debt stuff. I know we, we you know we, people seem to in, rely on. Like I've heard it said a lot about social media, but not everybody is social media. It, you know, Tamworth and Staffordshire are an ageing population, and not everybody has access to that. So, how are we reaching out to people that can't access? Some people, you know, can't telephone. People have got here, you know, hearing problems and the support that they've got when. You know, and we're all responsible as councillors as well when we're talking to our residents. But do the or the, the other um, integrated services, including you know, housing and welfare, do they actually talk to the residents about that as a standard when they go out to visit them? Because that's sometimes a way of reaching out rather than relying heavily on you know our social media platforms. The housing officers uh, who visit people's homes, uh, whether that be through talking to them about anything that's happened with their neighbour issues or debt issues or tenancy, they will refer people. Again, that's going back to this, our officers referring to the advice centre and referring to, to Beat the Cold. Um, you know, the, the Beat the Cold initiatives, including the warm homes around uh, energy efficiency and, and debt, they will refer them into that. Yes, they do. Um, and during the, the voluntary sector pulled together with with us uh, in November, I think it was, a leaflet went out across up to all GP surgeries and into um, vaccination centres uh, to reach and give information about the cost of living crisis. So it's been very proactive because the CTCIC hold the social prescribing contract in Tamworth so when the GPs can prescribe things into the community for people rather than giving them clinical interventions um, they will take out and issue information. And that's really good and do also your um, you know your street wardens and your caretakers for example have they been trained on this in with an overview because we often, with the you know the support staff that we use, they get overlooked. I don't know whether they are briefed on it because they are your eyes and ears of the, you know, of the council really. 
They don't specifically. However, within the community safety partnership, we've been holding forums. With there used to be pre-COVID, <laughs> there used to be what they called a "Let's Work Together" uh, initiative, where they brought frontline staff of any dis you know any uh, area in occasionally to discuss areas of vulnerability, how they could help when they go out. You know, we, we get information through uh, FARS from the fire service when they visit vulnerable people. And we've been asked to look at that again through the forums and see, certainly with the voluntary sector, they choose areas in which they'd like further information on and get the relevant speakers. So that will be a developing issue as we move forward. Now we've come out of COVID and people are meeting face to face again. Mm -hmm. I think it might be worth having a brief, a mini briefing session with them, though, to go through it because it, it, it that's sort of like lost, but they would they, they would be a valuable asset for the residents of Tamworth. Is that something, Chair, that the that the members might want to, you might want to recommend that we do something? Was that a cost of living briefing to frontline staff or to councillors? No, to frontline staff because they are the eyes, eyes and ears of the of, of the council, and they're the ones that you know. If they don't know about it, they might have heard about it. But as a council, this these are the thing. You know, as I said, you know, people might look on social media, but if you, they might not always think it relates to them to, you know, to get that message out there. I'm just, it's just useful while we're doing this to get the frontline staff, you know, not 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 to make it their responsibility, but an awareness. You know, I don't know what everybody else thinks, but I think it's really important. So, as such, like a, a signpost in briefing, so, so they know where where. Yeah, and where, I think a briefing on people. what the cost of living, what the council are doing, because they're they're sometimes the forgotten heroes, of of you know of any organisation. We support staff. We need to recognise, you know, that they could, you know, say, oh yeah, I know Mrs. So and So or Mr. So and So, and I never thought of that. They might do it automatically sometimes, but I just think it's important that they know what how important that this is. And you know, and to relay back and where to, you know, contact back to or give them the links and say, well, if you do this, this is the link you can register yourself or, you know, we can help you. As I said, that a valuable asset to the organisation. That's the will of the committee. So to cabinet or. So, uh, recommend to Cabinet that frontline staff undertake a signposting briefing in regards to cost of living. I don't that... see why I would need to go to Cabinet. I would think it's a day-to-day -day ordinary um, thing that you would do to sort of... I don't see why Cabinet have to approve... I'm a bit, a bit I mean, stumped, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I, I, you know, I have been asked to pull together a wide ranging report around vulnerability. And obviously the frontline staff, our housing teams, uh, our wardens, um, Revs and Ben staff, customer services staff do have information. And once we get, you know, I'll take the warmer homes, they have been given instructions on how they can refer people into warmer homes. So they do have that. It depends on how far reaching that needs to be. I mean, obviously, we are doing the let's work together as far as we can, and that will include PCSOs. Um, it will include some of our health colleagues uh, on a voluntary sector. Whether it needs to go to cabinet chair, I, I don't have that overview. I'm happy to take it back as an action. I can discuss with colleagues. You know, the part of this report was for me to be able to identify what actions and information and data members require or would like to see as a scrutiny committee moving forward. So, you know, I, I mean, I can guarantee they do, you know, a lot of them do, but if there's anything else we can take as a toolbox talk, talk for street scene for argument's yeah, sake, then yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking, as to, obviously, I would imagine they have regular briefings and whatever, like we all do, you know, and I just think it's important that that message is put out, you know, is put out there to them. And, you know, a lot of our, you know, you see them out and about, don't you? They're really helpful, you know, and as I said, they're, they're the eyes and ears of the organisation. So I would see that as, business as usual in a sense rather than go I don't know you know I don't know any of my colleagues think but I would see that as a business as usual action Councillor Kingston 
Yes, I agree. I don't think it needs to go to Cabinet. I think it's just one of those things you can take away and just action as you see fit. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to do that, Chair. Uh, uh, I think as well, you, you've referenced ReferNet. Yeah. Uh, and if, if they all know how to use ReferNet, then, then, then that, uh, that signifies to me that, that they know how to signpost and, that and, and, and the fact that the, the amount of people that are going through this service is showing that that, that is happening. Um, but but I suppose, I suppose uh, on a construction site, we'd have toolbox talks and, and maybe a, a toolbox talk around, could we all just have a little overview again of, of referring it? Absolutely. Uh, you know, when you talk about the street scene, yes, they do have regular toolbox talks uh, at street scene. So there's no reason why I couldn't look to, to give them some. Um, yeah, because they do see things a lot report things in so yeah i mean happy to take that chair so if that's a recommendation thank you uh it, again thank you for, for for the report uh really in depth uh, uh so the recommendations uh that we've been asked to recommend are the committee consider the update information provided against each housing strategy priority and actions uh, the committee provide feedback and direction for future reports in relation to the continued delivery of the housing strategy. Uh, there was only one more piece of data set, uh, which uh, around the damp and social housing, um, which I can see. Um, I, uh, I have asked if there was any more, and there's no. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, hug, yeah, hug too, because uh, we all need a good hug. Um, so, but there's no formal recommendations that need to go to cabinet or council. Uh, so, I'd like to thank. Uh, sorry, sorry, chair. Can I just ask that? Are you happy, therefore, to have quarterly reports against this moving forward, or? You know, what, what, what format would you require them in? I, I, I think quarterly until it starts to, to, to bed in uh, and then we can review that after the next one, please. Oh, sorry, one more question coming. Councillor Smith. Yeah, it's been the, the mould issue has been raised um, a few times tonight and I think it's quite important. I'm just thinking when there's less financial support next year um, and heating bills might be even higher, I think there's more possibility that a lot of um, residents are going to have problems with mould. I mean, even in my house, just an example, I, don't have the, I haven't had the heating on as much as I normally would. That's resulted in areas um, where, you know, I'm having to deal with mould and... I just I was just wondering, like, what's the level of guidance? Because I think it'd be a good idea not to sort of be patronising, but to provide a level of support and guidance. What part of the action plan, certainly for private sector housing, um, is the initial guidance. If someone rings and says they have damp or mould within their property, the initial guidance is actually an officer will check what they what they say, what they see. Quite often that can be included in a, in a photograph. Um, a lot of damp and mould that the private sector deal with or the inquiries can, can be dealt with without any formal action and advice. A lot of it is advice around um, ventilation, making sure you don't dry wet things on your radiators. Our social housing teams have got quite a lot of information that goes out to tenants around damp and mould. Uh, we'd like to replicate that for private sector tenants. So part of our actions when we reported to DLUC was for a plan moving forward to look at what information that we have as a council, what can be used, because that information that the social housing sector gets is the same as everybody else, you know, from, from a, you know, when your radiators are on, your ventilation. So we will provide that level of, of information. Yeah, it is. a lot of it is guidance. A lot of it is, is how you actually look in your house. And yes, keeping your heating off really in a cold house will actually increase the risk of damp and mould um, so it's whether it is a lifestyle or whether there are actual structural or you know yeah. internal issues with the house is what needs to be checked moving for moving yeah. forward 
Councillor Kingston. Just to add some depth to that, that homelessness um, at the meeting last week, there's a brilliant updated leaflet that the housing team issue included in the reports pack for that. Um, and it just lists exactly what you've said, but it's worth having a look at to um, because that's what's, what's issued to our social housing tenants and um, could easily be made available to the private housing tenants. I've just also asked for that to be circulated around the committee as well, because I know some of us aren't on that on that meeting, uh, but as long as it's in our emails and we can get that out on, on socials as well, as been put in packs from reports for, for tenants. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for that report. Uh, Item number nine is the loneliness and addiction support organisations. Uh, this report stems from the committee's work plan item. Uh, the partnerships team have provided a brief overview of the organisations the council interacts with. Following this discussion, the committee may want to consider whether any further briefings are required and or what further data it would like to consider. And again, over to Joe. Thank you. So Joe, Shay, you're making me work hard okay. tonight. <laughs> yeah, this report has been put together by um, Karen Clancy, the Community Partnerships uh, Manager. Um, and it's basically outlining um, the, the organisations that we are working with around loneliness, addiction and support. So the information contained is that scrutiny discussed the information at Appendix 1, which is the list of organisations that currently work or we are involved with in some way, shape or form, either through funding or through partnership working, um, and actually look to provide any recommendations for future interaction with these groups, you know, considering maybe you'd want to do a proposal for a council of briefing sessions. We had a briefing session last, uh, gosh, was it 2021 now? I can't remember. Um, around uh, you know the anchor organizations to give members a lot of information about where to go and what happens in Tamworth quite happy to consider that again for a future briefing session so those briefly are the recommendations in this report happy to take any questions chair councillor cook uh, yes um it's actually um well a um comment i know it's actually kind of laid out in front of us it's it's actually rather good that we have a document that's got the uh, um, partners in there. It's got what they um, do, etc. And to buy that at that, we we. To act on there. However, uh, um, um, most importantly, contact details. I mean, in a very well um, some of the reports I get, it's got the um, who, whoever it is on there, etc. But it's hardly got any. In the, of a data there and it's definitely not good contact details that to me on there is absolutely excellent so thank you <laughs> councillor kingston yeah i mean it's a great great the way it's laid out like to reinforce what uh, councillor cook has said um is it possible though to have some data on the back of this to see how many referrals are being made by council staff to these agencies and or uh, voluntary organizations um, just so we can see how many tamworth people are actually taking um, advantage of their facilities um, having seen many of them operate they are absolutely fantastic organisations and truly inspirational. Um, there's so many on there that, um, that, that um, are worthy of praise. Well, all of them are, 
but um, there are some ones in particular that you might not have heard of. I mean, I've seen myself how better way recovery work. Um, it is inspirational to see those people um, at work, particularly when they go into schools and do education outreach. Um, yeah, so is it possible to get some sort of data so we can see how successful we are in referring people to these organisations? We, we are able to get and ask for data for the, the organisations that we directly commission. So Better Way <coughs> is commissioned to do the outreach work for Tamworth through the Community Safety Partnership uh, locality deal funding. That will receive, we will be receiving information from Better Way as to the referrals. Um, Councillors, I don't know whether you do know, we, we, we actually gave, Better Way received a grant to set up their peer recovery uh, at the offices in Orchard Street. Uh, came very clear very early on and I'm, the, the room was not big enough that they were actually using. So we as a council provided another amount of money to allow the voluntary sector organisations over there to have a bigger room which meant they could see more people. So we will be getting information from Better Way Recovery around our referrals. A lot of the information and a lot of the referrals that Better Way get are, won't be from council staff, they will be from the wider public. Um, you know, and, and any information that these organisations can give they, they're more than happy to come and talk to you it may not be that they say yes Tamworth Borough Council referred to us but because of the work that we're doing or actually promoting it we they will tell you themselves how many Tamworth people have come through the door or how many people they've done so when I short answer sorry unless it's commissioned I can't really tell you how many things but I'm sure if members wish to have another session for these groups like Samaritans did, we, we had the information from Samaritans about how many people use the Samaritans line. If the committee wishes another voluntary sector organisation seminar, I'm sure they'd be more than happy to tell you how busy they are, where they're struggling, where they want volunteers. And that's the work that we do with Support Staffordshire. Council Climber. Yeah, I think another information seminar would be um, very useful because things have moved on quite a lot since 2021. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to recommend that we that we put forward that we have another councillor member seminar, if that's possible. Can I just expand on that recommendation? Uh, what I was going to recommend anyway can as long as you don't want me to speak no no um so ju just just to add on to that uh that it so to recommend that a face-to-face -face seminar take place every two years with the voluntary organizations not just around loneliness and addiction but all of them like the one in uh, 20 uh, i think it, i think it was november 21 um but in between that within the count councillors um training uh, that that we do for, for new councillors that come on onto the council uh, that in that gap year so every two years it's face to face but then every two years it's it, it's on online training so you're first in i'm adapting second in okay. <laughs> uh debate can I just just to I think what I what I will do here as well because you're right it's really useful to always have um, contact details. What happens sometimes is when we are updating the contact details, quite often they go out of date very quickly and it's quite a lot of pressure on staff to keep updating a, a database. So what I'd like to recommend and I think I'm going I will speak to support Staffordshire when. What we recommend to all our voluntary sector organisations is that they are members of Support Staffordshire. It's free, it doesn't cost them anything. But Support Staffordshire is then able to implement training sessions with them, give them advice on insurance, um, volunteering, grants, where they get grants and funding from. Staffordshire County Council run a system called Staffordshire Connects. And what they try and encourage the groups to do 
is to actually update their own details so that if somebody leaves, somebody changes, they change the phone number, they keep their own database up to up to speed. So I'm trying, I'm, what I'm going to try and sort of sort with Carol, I will take it back to Carol, is making sure that members have actually access to Strategy Connects or know where to go so that you can actually, we can provide this, but we can't provide it for every single community sector in Tamworth. But I'm happy to sort of see how, make sure that you, everybody's aware of Staffordshire Connects. So you go on, you might want a loneliness charity, you've got keywords to go on, loneliness charities Tamworth, and it should give you a list of all support Staffordshire members. So we, initially we encourage them to support, support Staffordshire, which gives them access to, to update it. So if that's okay with members, and I can, you know, obviously you have this, I'll circulate it. I'm trying to encourage that support Staffordshire bit so that we've, we've got the access to that database, which is, say, a, a member controlled database that update themselves. It's public, yeah, it's public. Is that, if, if, if that's okay, Chair? Yeah, it is. I think that Staffordshire Connects is brilliant um, because another recommendation I was going to make was to relook at because I recommended a well-being portal. Yeah. But if there's if Staffordshire Connects is public, all the council has to do is set up a web page on their website and have the link for Staffordshire Connects, and that to me. Is, is my vision of the portal because it it directs you straight to all the charities that, like you say, it's got keywords, loneliness, there you go. Councillor Greiterix. Thank you. Just to go back to something Councillor Wardrop said earlier, that's a fantastic idea, but everybody doesn't have access to social media. And, and let's take loneliness. If people are lonely, they are cocooned. You know, they don't speak to people. So these are fantastic ideas, but they are not going to reach probably some of the most vulnerable people. And, and again, that is, is the work that we do with our key anchor organisations. So that, that would certainly be the loneliness line that, um, well, the, the, the helpline that CTCIC run. That is again working with those anchor organisations as we've described what leaflets do we need, who needs to know, and actually look at those, you know, that bit of work that needs to go on without providing, you know, 100,000 leaflets to go around all of the uh, all of Tamworth, but actually targeting those areas that the, the, our key anchor organisations deal with. And that includes Support Staffordshire, and they will give quite a lot of advice around how to target. So, yeah, I mean, I take it on board, of course. It's not always going to be through electronic means. Tammy. One of the things you mentioned earlier was to put leaflets up in doctor surgeries. Well, if you know anybody who's been able to get an appointment face to face with a doctor, I'd like to meet them, frankly. I think probably a little late for this year, but with the, the, the debt advice going on the council tax there, could, could, uh, I'm not on about. Uh, a big massive pamphlet go, going out but but even if it's uh what it's going to be on the internet the direction to the the staffordshire connects website mm -hmm. and I, to I totally understand about uh, it, it, it's just another way of getting people to to that service um because because like you say it will just be reams and reams but 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 as long as we can direct people both on our website and in any literature that that we can fit it onto, I, I think it's going to be a benefit. Uh, and, and of course, you know, we, we are actually, the council, we are actually updating and looking at our website at the moment. So the content that needs to go on there will be generated from the individual departments. So, you know, we, we are looking at what information goes on there all the time. Um, so, yeah, we can take that on board. Um, and again, back to the face-to-face, -face, you know, if you, you're looking at a two-year forum, I mean, it may not be, it depends on what you want, really. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we've done successfully through the community safety partnerships, and once we started to come out of COVID, we had the assembly rooms and we had people actually showcasing what they did. So whether it's a case of you want an event, whether that may be back at the assembly rooms where we have key speakers, but we also have 
I think you were there, weren't you there, Chair, where actually you can go round to each of the organisations and talk to them directly and impart that information and that if that's something that's more of a a bit of talking, a bit of information given, but also a showcasing event. Yeah, I, I, I think that 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 one was that that one was brilliant. Like I said, that that I was at. Um, I, th I think the issue, the more of the most more recent events that have been on at the the assembly rooms have been in in the day, and I, I think that a, a lot of us work and obviously I know you don't want to be, be there at all hours of the evening um, but but if if there is one on the evening that the, there's a lot more chance that that councillors are going to be able to get there I think Joe, that's what I was thinking of it, it, it will it, yeah I mean obviously anything for members will always be a week weekend sorry will always be the evening <laughs> uh, so yeah that no I wasn't intending to have it in the day for members it was it was going to be an evening uh, showcase Just a quick one when you're talking about the council tax having the debt thing on there. Have you thought about having barcode and all the QR codes at the bottom? The QR codes are on there. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so the QR codes link directly to the charities. They do. Yeah. Yeah. So we have every two years, face to face, and then in between them to them them years, an online for councillors. Don't think we need to vote on that, do we? Oh, sorry, chair. So an online. So is that? Oh, I'm taking safeguarding as a as a, a course that we do something like that. Just over areas of vulnerability from from we do it through a student or something like that. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, yeah. Part of your induction as well. Is that a teams? Okay. Oh, like okay. Oh no, no. No, you want it over teams? Okay, fine. I will just need to go away. To have a think about it, put some proposals for you. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Is that okay? Are you happy with that? Or... I'm happy with that, Chair. I was going to suggest it would be after, like, you know, the new influx of councillors, so sometime in sort of June time. Yeah, Joe, Joe, me and you need to have a, we'll have a conversation, I think. We'll, we'll just sort of put that into the training yeah. plan, yeah. yeah, with your induction and... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Is there any, any disagreement across the committee with that? One question I did want to ask, um, and it's brilliant that I can see that, that uh, COIC is starting to work on the strategies, uh, the, the three strategies that, that you've mentioned yeah. in the report. I know they've only just started, uh, and I might be trying to rush them a little bit, but uh, when are we seeing the data coming from that? The, from memory, the, they've got to have some data for us by the end of March. Okay. Um, they are not writing the strategies per se, they, they, they're getting the baseline data. That baseline data will enable us to complete and finish some strategies, but it will also start to identify projects through the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, which runs till March 2025. Um, so, uh, and what they've got within the provision for that strategy is another baseline assessment, I think in 2025, before the UK Shared Prosperity Funding finishes. So there's a little bit of money set aside for them to do another baseline, see what's changed, see if there's anything different, make sure that we're actually looking at all the right areas. But the, the initial data will come by the end of March. They are, they're holding uh, a number of stakeholder engagements, actually. Um, 
and I think it's probably worth making sure that they're given some information through to councillors, Chair. Oh. I am actually going to to one of them, uh, and I could feed feed back to the committee once once oh. I've been been to it. Uh, it, it, it is in Madara. Who, So, I mainly ask the question because we're meant to be feeding in uh, with the developing healthier communities paper, which I spoke about earlier in the in the chair's update, uh, which we're going to look at a little bit later on in the work plan. Um, so, so, so the baseline's going in then. When are you, you sort of thinking of of a, a draft strategy? I think I need to go back. What we let, the next board meeting is, I think next week, um, and I'll try and get some deadlines for you. We haven't actually said, you know, the contract to get the baseline date is March thirty first. We haven't got a plan, you know, a timeline for the actual production of the strategies because I'm guessing that would depend also on some of the projects that get identified. Um, so I will update. I will update the committee as soon as I know exactly what those timelines are. Uh, is it possible that you could just grab the um, email the committee with the the dates of the stakeholder meeting? I know I've seen one in my emails, um, but if you know of any more, um, that the dates can be booked in uh, for people who, who do want to attend. Fine. <coughs> yep, I can do that. Is there any more any more questions? Okay, so the report contains the following recommendation that the scrutiny discuss the information at Appendix 1, uh, which we have. Uh, provide any recommendations for future interaction with these groups, considering the proposal of, uh, for a council briefing, uh, which has been discussed. Uh, no formal voted recommendations. Uh, and again, I'd like to uh, th thank you and your team for the, for the report, Jeff. And uh, good evening and get well soon. Um, so item 10 is the forward plan um, I haven't seen anything that's up there at the minute I don't suppose anybody else has Councillor Kingston I don't know whether this should come to health and well-being um, but looking at the latest forward plan there was a couple of things I noticed um, we've missed the boat with one of them but just something to consider for the future is the homelessness strategic update is going to cabinet on the 16th of March I think we had that in, uh, there was one in January and then one in November. Right, that was obviously when I was off, so I apologise for that. So, yeah, we've already done that. And the other one was um, going to Cabinet on the 27th of April is the Tamworth Community Safety Partnership Plan. Now, I know it's going to infrastructure safety and growth on the 23rd of March, but from a well-being perspective, point of view for the residents of Tamworth, is that something that we might want to consider just coming forwards to us as well to cast an eye over and to have some sort of input into? Okay. Um so I've just got clarification. It's one, it's one of the required um, reports that has to go to ISAG. Um, and I, I think with it going to one scrutiny committee, I, I, I understand what, what you say about the it, it, it does have a health and wellbeing aspect to it. Um, but I, th I think double double booking on both, both committees might be... A, 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 I understand because there are overlaps across a few reports. I mean, I can bring it up with uh, the chair of the committee tomorrow as I'm uh, speaking to, if that would help. 
Yeah, I mean, I was just throwing it out there for committee discussion because we've heard so much about the Community Safety Partnership tonight in the reports. It would just be sort of something that, that we could bring to us to consider in the future. But if the committee think that ISAG can, can do the job from a health and wellbeing point of view, no worries. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a, a discussion with the, the chair of ISAG tomorrow about it. Um, but, but again, members are always welcome to come to, to each other's meetings. We can't speak at each other's meetings, though, can we? Not well, no. um, but, but, but at least we'll be there and any questions can be conveyed via, via the chairs. If you think there's something on that report, which will be up before our meeting, uh, that, that you'd like me to, to, to pass, yeah. pass on. Uh, anything else for the forward plan? So, the work plan. Uh, earlier, we spoke about the uh, consider the outcomes of the report of staff's county healthier communities workshop. Um, that, like I say, the link was on the website. It's, it's, it's quite a, a a good report. Um, where the link is, I attended that that workshop. Um, I think that it would have to be a single item night with the seven recommendations that are in there, and with saying that, it would have to go into the next year um, because March is. Uh, meeting is quite full already um, but I'd really encourage everyone to go and read that report in depth because uh, the recommendations uh, that are in there um, some of them can be actioned uh, some of them can't which I've alluded to i.e. the uh, f formulation of the health and wellbeing uh, sorry a wellbeing strategy uh, because the tender's only just gone out and they're just getting the baseline figures um, but there are some elements within that report where we could recommend things. But but like I say, I, th I think I think that would have to be a one item meeting because uh, it, it would take quite a bit of discussion. I was just wondering if anybody's hopefully re read it already uh, and and hopefully feel the same as myself. Um, well, just going to get the, the link on its own, just in case it's got lost in the myriad of, of paperwork. Uh, sorry, Council Camel. Yeah, I'm just looking at the work plan, and you said that March is quite full up, but I could only see um, one item for March. spaces and that the update from safeguarding sorry to I, th I think the, the, the only issue is that I think that this this is going to be because it's too too, too yeah. big um, yeah. to, to fit to fit in with already them two items being on there um, no obviously I don't know the the, the the structure of of the council going into the new municipal year year. April. Yeah. Uh, would anybody have a shoe with me asking for another meeting in April to discuss this one, the, this this one item issue? Uh, not the first two weeks. But then we then get it's to Easter, that's the no, first, yeah, the first two weeks are Easter. Look. 
Yeah. Uh, so, so possible 18th or 19th of April, uh, but please hold out for the impending meeting email. Uh, so that one, yeah. Uh, there was a question asked uh, at the last meeting in regards to uh, the mental health and wellbeing support provision for council staff and councillors. Uh, so for staff, there's a health and wellbeing policy that went through appointments and staffing in January 23. I've had confirmation off HR that uh, councillors aren't able to access the support in there. Um, That could be a small one to put on in April as well. April. If we, yeah. So, so I just want to go away and do a little bit, little bit more digging on that. Uh, I think that will be small enough to speak about in April if if everyone's fine with that going on. April. No. Oh, could go on either. Yeah. Could go on either. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so far, not going. Maybe we're going to have the toilets in there, March. So, yeah. Uh, so that's going in. And then 24, 25, and April. Okay. April. Um, well, that could be a little bit easier. Yeah. 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 Reckon we'd fit public toilets in. March. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Public toilets, uh, been going a little little while, um, but we've got some more some more data back, and I'd just like to bring uh, the officer in to dis discuss through where we're at with the with the public toilets. So March would be safeguarding updates, public toilets, green spaces, and that's it. And then April would be healthier communities looking at the uh, primarily at that document, uh, which we'll send out again, and then the draft annual report of the committee. Any disagreements? Okay, uh, so that brings the close of tonight's meeting at nineteen thirty-two. Thank you all for your attendance.